welcome to Faith and Prayer with Donna. I'm Donna Hamilton, and uh, I have a wonderful guest today, a personal friend, Julia Wagstaff. Julia has had quite a life. She was in the Army. Uh, she's done many things, and uh, I just she's going to share some of her experiences with the Lord. And we welcome you to the program, and I just pray that you have a blessed 2020, the new year. So, Julia, uh, would you like to say a few words about yourself and then share what you'd like to? Um, well, uh, you have two sons. I have two sons, and um, I moved to San Antonio after I got out of the Army, and um, I've done some ministry in the healing rooms and uh, a couple other places, and uh I've just had some times in the Lord, walking with Him and ministering to people, and it's been a journey, a real journey. And you've been a volunteer chaplain. Yes. How, how does a person become a volunteer chaplain? Well, um, I did it several years ago. A friend of mine asked me if I wanted to do that, and um, so I just applied at a specific hospital uh, for volunteer chaplaincy, and um, they just do an interview, and you go in and you just, you pray for people. Okay. You go in and pray for people. Oh, well, good. Do you have any, uh, you know, uh, visits or circumstances, people that kind of stand out? Oh, my goodness, yes. <laughs> do I ever have okay. some? I've had some, uh, I would say, very supernatural um, times up at the hospital. Um, you have to realize, too, I think... It's one of the Lord's favorite places for people to come in and minister because people have one foot here and one foot, you know. In eternity. In eternity. Yeah. And so if you're willing to be bold, and uh, I was willing to be bold and speak the gospel and pray for people. So uh, actually I had this one specific incident that never, never left me. Um, they used to give us two floors to go and minister on. And um, one of my favorite ones was ICU. Oh. I loved going to ICU and uh, just ministering to people. And this, there was, um, as soon as I walked in onto the floor, um, the first room, there was a, a young lady sitting on the side of the bed of a, a very, uh, he was about 90 years old. Wow. And um, I asked, as I began to walk towards the door, I asked her, I, could I come in and pray for the gentleman? And it was funny because she laughed and she goes, yes, come on in. And um, she said the reason that she laughed was because if, uh, if it had been up to him, he'd never have anybody come in and pray for him. But um, he had had several strokes and he was intubated. And um, so this was on a Friday because I used to go in on uh, Friday midday and then Sunday evenings. And <clears throat> so I went into the room and um, there was a whole lot going on with him because he was agitated and he wanted to pull out his tubing. And so I just, with the young lady, I said a, a quick prayer over him. And... Um, at the time, I didn't really think much of it, but he never, he never left my mind. And I went and I ministered, you know, on the floor to the other people. And, um, and when I was getting ready to leave, she was the young lady that was with the elderly gentleman, um, said, hey, you know, before you go, just so you know, you know, they exhibited him and, and he was doing great. You know, he was breathing, doing everything on his own and he felt better having to be able to breathe on his oh, own. What does ex he, the tubing. He had the, he had uh, tubing. Um, to help him breathe. Yeah, well, it was, he had a whole lot of stuff going on at that time, and he just was agitated and wanted whatever they had. He wanted everything off. And so I said, oh, great, you know, he's doing better, feeling better. And so uh, I left for that day. But <clears throat> when I got home, uh, the gentleman, I mean, the gentleman was so on my heart. And um, so I was just sitting there and I was praying to the Lord. 
And all of a sudden, I got a picture um, in my mind. And I thought, well, that's odd. I have a picture of the Tin Man. And um, so I was like, the Tin Man, the Tin Man. So I kept praying. And I was like, but finally it came to me, what does the Tin Man need? A he heart. Needs a heart. He, and so I felt like the Lord wanted to give the gentleman a heart of flesh. That's scripture. Yes. The scripture, God said, I will take out, remove the heart of stone, and I will give you a heart of flesh. The Holy Spirit speaks in pictures and words and even scents. You know, smells, some aromas sometimes. Yes, yes. And I just felt, keep praying for him, keep praying for him, because I felt that he was on the brink of, you know, <clears throat> here and <clears throat> eternity. in eternity. And I knew that the Lord wanted him. I knew that the Lord wanted him for himself. And so I just kept praying about him and kept praying about him. And um, I thought, honestly, well, that's it, you know. The Lord used me to intercede for him, mm -hmm. and I prayed for him. And so I thought, well, I'm, you know, that's it. Well, lo and behold, that uh, Sunday evening, they had assigned me once again to the ICU. So I went up there not expecting to see him. And there he was once again in the same room by himself. And... Um, so I was getting ready to go in. The nurses were busy. Nobody was around. And I just had this overwhelming flood. I guess I would call it a <clears throat> just an anointing wow. come over me. And um, I just began to cry as I walked into the room. And he looked at me. And the funny thing, he had one eye that he could open <laughs> and he would follow me with it. And um, but I, I went to him and I, you know, I just began to to speak to him and tell him about the Lord and talk to him. And even though, he, you know, he, he had had so many strokes, he couldn't really say much to me. But I just had this, oh, desire, just this strong desire <clears throat> to bring this gentleman into the kingdom of God. And I kept praying for him, and I, would, I told him about the gospel. I said, you know, even if you can't say it, I, you know, you can say it in your mind. You can ask the Lord to come into your heart, yes. make him yours, and that he would forgive you for your sins. And I, I probably prayed with him and, and just talked to him for quite a while, actually, 10 to 15 minutes. And, and I just kind of had tears in my eyes, and I looked at him and I said, I hope you're not upset with me but I just want to ask you, if you have responded to this, can you show me something wow. that, you know, that, that this has touched your heart? And he lifted up his hand and he put his hand in mine and he just looked at me and I could feel the thank you. Oh. I could feel the thank you. I just thought that was an awesome, Praise wonderful event. The Lord. <laughs> you know, in the Bible, it talks about the, it's a parable that Jesus told about that a man went out at 9 a.m., I think at 6 a.m. actually, and hired workers to work in his vineyard. Then he went out at 9 a.m., and he hired some more men, and he told the first ones, I'll pay you a denario, which was a day's <coughs> wage. And then he went out at 12 o'clock, and I think at 6 o'clock, and he, um, he said, and found men standing around needing work, and he said, yes. you come. And some of them came in, and they just worked maybe three hours, where the first ones had worked 12 hours all day. They would labored in the heat, and he paid them all the same. And the first ones were angry. They expected more. And uh, the man, the owner of the vineyard, said, uh, did you not agree with me to work for a denario for the day? He said, can I not do with my own, uh, in other words, money, what? what I choose to do, and I choose to pay them. Well, this is representative, not of their rewards, but this is representative of grace. Yes. God gives us grace. Much grace. We're not saved by our works. And there are those who have labored, and Billy Graham, he will have such, he has yes. such a magnificent reward. Whereas people who come in at the last minute, 
uh, it's very interesting. I think it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It might be 7. And those, all a man's work will be tested. See, we're all saved by grace of God. Mm -hmm. For all have sinned and yes. fallen short of the glory of God. But we're rewarded by works. Salvation, heaven is going to be wonderful for everyone. But for someone who has labored in the, the field, the vineyard, uh, bringing in souls, just like Julia did, going there and interceding, and the Holy Spirit began to pray through her, when she began to weep for that man, that, was, that wasn't just Julia herself. Right. It was the Holy Spirit. Jesus uses us. We're his hands, his voice. Right. And uh, we have to speak the word. Uh, I heard someone recently who uh, had been Catholic all her life. I, maybe I read it in a book and was, was dying. And the Lord showed this uh, believer the, a vision of that. Well, no, she went and talked to the woman somehow. And the woman said, I'm in this dark place or this place, this kind of grayish. And I can see Jesus, but, and he's looking down at me, and I can tell he loves me, but he doesn't, uh, he can't, I can't get to him, and he can't get to me. And the woman asked her, was it you that yes. told me this story? <laughs> yes. Well, then you tell it. Okay. <laughs> and start over if you have to. Okay, well. I hear and read so many things. Uh, this was at the same hospital, and actually the same floor, <laughs> but in a, at a different time. Uh, I had gone to uh, do my rounds, and um, as I was walking, literally I was kind of looking in her room, and I hadn't, you know, I had a numbers of rooms that I was supposed to go to, and she actually wasn't on the list, but I l just happened to walk by and look in her room, and the woman saw me with my, my, um, my uh, vest that has a uh, volunteer chaplain, and she just kept beckoning me, beckoning me. Her eyes got large, and I was like, okay, hold on, I'm coming. And um, so uh, I signed in and, and walked into the room and walked over to the bed, and she said, I've been waiting for you. And I was like, you've been waiting for me. And she said, yes, I've been waiting for someone to tell my story to. And I said, okay, well, I'm here. And uh, she said, um, she told me she had some very uh, uh, disease in her lungs oh. that hardened her lungs. Oh, wow. Yes. And so she said uh, this wasn't, coming to the hospital wasn't new to her, but as she was getting older, it was getting more difficult. And so uh, she had actually come in very, very ill, and um, she had to have some surgery and what had took, taken place on in the surgery she had died three times oh in my surgery goodness. yes and she said when I died she said I was in this place she said I could see Jesus he was off a ways but she said the strangest thing was that I could not get to him she was in a place she she couldn't really tell me a whole lot about the place but she knew that she wasn't where Jesus was. And she said this took place uh, actually the three times mm -hmm. that she had passed. Uh, and, and it was documented she had uh, died in the wow. uh, operating room. Wow. And she said, I had tried to tell doctors, I had tried to tell people, but nobody would listen. And so, uh, so she said, why couldn't I get to Jesus? And she was a little Catholic woman, and um, she said, I pray to him all the time. I love Jesus. And I said, uh, well, I need to ask you this question. Have you ever professed Christ as your Lord and Savior? And so we really just went over the gospel. We went over, um, as we, you know, born-again Christians say, saved. And so I told her, you profess Christ. You ask him to come into your heart. Um, you ask him to forgive you of all of your sins. And she was just so uh, willing, so ready, you know. And I said, just receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I, she said, I've never done that. You know, she had never been uh, 
informed or asked to do that. She was very excited, actually. She said she didn't feel that she had um, too much longer uh, on earth with the, the lung issues. But of course, I also prayed for the God to heal her and to be uh, um, a sign and a wonder, miraculous. Um, but I never did see the woman again. But I know that she received Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. Well, praise God. In uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, I believe, it says that with the uh, heart, man believes unto salvation. With the mouth, you confess it. Uh, you can't be a secret believer in the, in the sense that, uh, and the time may come when tribulation, when people are secret believers, but they're not a secret to those around them because that who've heard them confess, Jesus is my savior. I believe that, Lord, I believe you are the son of God, Lord Jesus, and that you came to earth. You, yes. you lived and <clears throat> uh, died for my sins as well as everyone else's. And I ask you to be my savior. Yes. You must ask. So that's the, the thing that is so important here. She was 90 years old. She'd loved the Lord. She had prayed to him for decades and decades, but she had never with her mouth confessed him. That means, uh, that's the word used in the, in the Bible, but it means to speak something out. And she had confessed or spoken out that Jesus Christ, yes. mm -hmm. she wanted him to be her Lord. The Lord is a gentleman and you need to invite him in. It's like having someone you've invited to your house and he's standing outside but you've never asked him, to, uh, and you've prepared all this stuff inside, but you've never asked him into your house, and he's standing outside until you invite him in. Right. Remember the scripture where Jesus said, Behold, I stand at, at the, the door, door and door. knock. Yes. If any man opens the door, I and my father will come in and sup with him or eat with him. So you need to ask. And, and Jesus did make the statement that I am the truth, the light, and the way and that no one gets to the Father but through me. Amen. So. Do you remember what he said about confessing him before men? That if, if a man confesses him before men, then Jesus will confess that man or that woman before, before, his his, before God, his Father, and the holy angels. Mm. But if a man does not confess him before men, you have to make a statement then he said, and I will not confess him before my father and the holy angels. These things are very important. They're written down in a book, the Lamb's Book of Life, when you actually uh, go forward. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't have to be in a church. You could be sitting in a restaurant. You could be riding in a car and someone picks you up and leads you to the Lord. Yes. Or you could pick someone up and lead them to the Lord. I'm not recommending uh, hitchhiking. <laughs> no. The society has changed. But I'm saying it doesn't have to be in a church, but at least one person needs to hear you say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. What else would you like to share or something else? <laughs> um, I would honestly say to those Christians who maybe have never stepped out. Um, I've stepped out in Walmart. I've stepped out in grocery stores and just um, let the Holy Spirit guide you. Uh, to speak to somebody. You can even say, Lord, um, highlight someone to me. Uh, That's what he does with me. Yeah. If, or if it's for just uh, a prayer, for a healing, um, actually even a smile and just an encouragement. I've done that recently. I went to Walmart and I just was like, oh, your hair looks so nice. You just, it's adorable. You know, I've just talked to people and uh, been humor, you know, have humor. Yeah. It helps a lot. And uh, just to be able to, to touch somebody's life and, you know, uh, pray for them. Either pray for them at that moment or if they're uncomfortable with that, you know, maybe you could just even have their name and continue to pray for them and bring them into, you know, uh, a relationship. You don't know. It's a seed planted. Amen. And you want to be led by the Holy Spirit. When you receive Jesus as your Savior, yes. the Holy Spirit enters in. Uh, you've told me before an incident where you were 
you didn't you were tired you didn't want to go for that Sunday evening and someone needed you yes we um, have a minute and um, it was a young and woman a that worked there she'd had uh, breast cancer her boyfriend uh, left her I mean her whole world was falling apart There's and the time down there okay, okay. I'm watching <laughs> and anyway she uh, the Lord led me to go it was I just didn't want to go that day but I ended up going and I went to speak to her and she was actually going to commit suicide and if I hadn't come would somebody maybe not have talked? You know, I mm -hmm. talked to her. I spoke to her. I said, "Come on, hun, let's go. We're gonna pray. We're gonna we're gonna get this thing off of you because you have way too much to do. It, it's just a, we all go through the valley of the shadow of death. Yes. And this is just part of the process sometimes. And God is gonna help you. He sent me here just for you. Julia just for you. had been resting and the Lord said, I need you. Yes, he said, I need you to go, now go. And I just felt like I had blocks on my feet of cement, but I went and it was the enemy. He didn't want me no. to be there for her, and but God did. And I was obedient and I went and, uh, you know, he saved a life. He and saved a life. she walked up and the woman, the young woman was sitting there at the, her desk area, just so sad, you said. Yes, very sad. And she was looking at the computer and she was looking up how to commit suicide. So God sent her. God loves you. And if you haven't prayed yet, just ask Jesus. To come into your heart. Just, just say out loud, Lord Jesus, I need you. Come into my heart. Make me yours. And, and um, I will confess my sins. Amen. Amen. And then tell someone, God bless you. Bye.